Welcome back. My name is Chuck Tomasi from ServiceNow, and we covered in the last lesson how to declare some variables, and now I want to show you how we take action on those variables. Let me get out of the way so you can see this, and I'm going to take this script apart. We're on lesson four, mathematical operators, and I'm going to take this script apart little by little so you can see what's going on. There are five main arithmetic operators in JavaScript. That is plus to add two numbers together, and it also has a special meaning when we do this with strings. I'll show you that too. Uh, minus, obviously, to subtract two numbers. Multiplication, division, and modulo, which gives you the remainder after a division is done. We'll see that in this example here. Let me paste this in, and it starts out with just two variable assignments. A is 12 and B is three. I love these numbers because there's so many things you can do to 12. And if I just add two numbers together, let me make this as simple as possible and cut that part out. You can see GS Info is going to output the result of two plus two. Now, ever since I was a little boy, this added up to four. So once again, I'm in scripts background. I type scripts minus up here. I get down to system definition scripts background, click that and run my script. And of course, it gives me four. So my childhood education is still paying dividends. If I add a little bit more to that and take a plus two, I can take a variable. I'm going to get this out of the way. We already know what four is. A is the value 12 and it will substitute in 12 plus two and I'm going to get the output expected 14. So I can take two numbers and add them together. I can take a variable and a number. I can take two variables. I can take 15 variables and add them together. As long as they're all integers, I'm in pretty good shape. Let's take the rest of that and look at, I'm going to leave that one alone and now take B and increment it by two. That is, ignore this line for just a minute. Okay, A is now 12. B is going to be incremented by two. So it takes B, adds two to it, and stores it back into B. So you can see that I'm going to increment this variable by two. I should get B was originally three. At the end of this, it will be five. 12 plus five is 17. And when I run that, it of course says 17. Simple addition operators. Now, as my comment pointed out, there is a shorthand for this. So the B equals B plus two could be shorthanded as B plus equals two. If you see that in JavaScript, you will now know what it means and you will sound intelligent at cocktail parties because that's the value of all of this education, right? It does the same thing, only a little shorter, B plus equals two. I can run that through here. Again, I get 17 as expected. That is addition. Very easy to do. Let me go look at the subtraction section of this. Oh, there's a couple other things you can do in here. You can increment by one by using the increment operator plus plus. This can either go on the beginning of the expression or the end. So a plus plus and plus plus a are exactly the same in this scenario. It will increment a by one. So take it from 12 to 13 and then print it. And of course you get 13. That's what's stored in the variable a. If I were to do it as plus plus a, it will do the same thing. However, if I were to, I can, I can do this within the GS info. And there is a subtle difference because it will first increment, then print in this case. So I will get 13 again, and A will have the value of 13. If I were to reverse that and say A++ plus plus and plus plus A, it's going to say 12. A still has the value of 13 when the script is run. So further statements now have a value of 13 in A, and I can access that and reference that. That is very important when it comes to the plus plus operator. There are times when you want to use it as a prefix operator and a postfix operator. So I just want to point that out that plus plus isn't always what you think. Right? Most of the time I do it, it is a plus plus, 
or whatever variable and increment it. But there are times when I go, hmm, I want to do it before so that by the time I use it, it has the value that I want. Okay, now let's take a look at subtraction. Subtraction is exactly what you would expect if I were to take B, let's just take these comments out and say A, gs.info is our appropriate output statement we'll be using for the first few scripts here and say a minus b i would expect to get you got it the number nine and there it is if i were to take b minus a it can in fact do integer math which means it goes below zero and i will get a negative nine how about that so three minus 12 is negative nine we know that it is working correctly I can also, same as before, decrement a variable by saying a equals a minus, minus, let's do it this way, a equals a minus b, and then output a should be nine, all right? And it is. I could, as noted before, shorthand notation that by doing instead of a plus equals, do a minus equals, and that will again give me nine. So that is an easy way to do that. And similar to plus plus, I can also do decrement very simply. You'll often see this. JavaScript programmers, like many other languages, are very efficient people, we'll say. They wanna get things done with as least work as possible, and 12, Decrement it once, becomes 11. I output that. It was 11, as you saw. So that is the minus operator and the way you can use it. Multiplication is done with the asterisk. So if I say, what is... Let's make a... Well, let's just do what was in here. A times B is... And you see, that I'm putting spaces around this just for readability. If I start crunching things up too much it makes it a little difficult to read, especially when you have more complex operations. So there's A times B, 12 times three, last I checked was 36, it gives me 36. I have a simple multiplication operator. You may wanna do that at some point. Division is a slash operator. This is very similar to other languages where 12 minus three, excuse me, 12 divided by three is four. If I had some other number where there was a fractional part and say 12 divided by five, it will print out the fractional part as a decimal. Now that gets me into modulo, which is percent. What is the remainder of 12 divided by five? Should be two because it's two with two left over, it would be two. And of course it is. If I were to change this to 13 modulo five, it will be three. Keep going. You can guess what 14 modulo five is, is four. But when I get to 15 and divide 15 by five, the remainder is zero. Why is that helpful? Because you may have something that you want to run cyclical and your counter just keeps going on and on and on and on. One, two, three, four, eight million, nine million but say every fifth record you want to trigger something. So you can do a modulo five and when number modulo five equals zero, let's do this trigger. So very handy for having a cyclical and go, hey, am I, am I at that point? Maybe it's every other line in a table becomes gray. Maybe it's every third record uh, it triggers an alert or a survey. I'm not sure why that came up. I've been working the whole time. I didn't actually time out on that instance. So that's the modulo operator and how you can use it. There is another thing in here that I want to point out, and that is using parentheses. Parentheses can change the order. These mathematical, these arithmetic operators have an order of operation in them, in that multiplication and division happen first. So if you were to see this expression, you might think five plus four is nine times two is 18. That is not true. And you'll have, sometimes you see these things on Facebook. What is the answer to this? Well, if you do programming, you'll know. And again, you can sound intelligent at cocktail parties. The answer to this is actually four times two happens first, that's eight, and then five, it will be 13. 
But Chuck, what if I want the 5 plus 4 to happen first? You can use parentheses to override that because multiplication and division happen first, subtraction and addition happen next, and you will get the appropriate 18 that you wanted before. So use parentheses to group operations of lower precedence together to make them happen first. Nothing beats the parentheses. Nothing. Okay, that's when it comes to arithmetic operators, they happen first. That's the rule. So that's the benefit of using parentheses in your arithmetic operators. And I think that is all I had in this script. Again, you can find that as lesson four. Script number one, there's only one script on this lesson so far. And I hope you join me in the next lesson where I start to talk about some common error messages that you may run into as you're typing some of these. If you've been taking these scripts off the GitHub repo, I think that was available right there. You can, of course, maybe make mistakes and I'm gonna walk you through a few of those to show what they mean, just the common ones. There's just a lot of mistakes we can make, <laughs> what they mean and how we can get uh, past those, correct them and go on. So I look forward to talking to you in the next video then. Till then, take care.